Over the past year and a half, I've been training different martial arts from boxing to Muay Thai to Wing Chun and MMA. And these are 10 things I learned as a beginner. Andrew, you picked it back up after 20 years. I thought you didn't stop at Taekwondo like the rest of the family. Woo, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really glad I got back into it. And again, guys, I'm not an expert. I've only trained for about a year and a half. I've obviously have more experience in some of these martial arts than others. Okay, but this is my opinion. You guys let me know in the comments down below. Again, you may disagree with me. My opinion may change in the future, but this is what I'm thinking. No, so I think far. it's gonna be a good list because this is your 18th month journey jumping like head first first or like uh, two feet mm -hmm. into it. And uh, it's good because you still have that fresh eye perspective. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm just saying this is stuff I've given a lot of thought. So anyways, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. And David, something else that we gave a lot of thought to recently too was Smala guys that's smoky mala together smala sauce.com from Sichuan to Sicily yep. I'm telling you there is nothing like this out on the market right now I think it goes amazing on pasta noodles rice any other sort of carbohydrates I'm telling you it gives you that extra kick you don't need to use too much and you but you could use a lot if you want finding the recipe for that took about 14 months and a lot of different iterations so I'm very proud of that chili oil anyways also proud of my journey through martial arts. All right, so what is the first thing that you learned? Because anytime, I, I would imagine there was a very steep learning curve after giving up martial arts, Taekwondo in like sixth grade. Yeah, so for the past like however many decades, I've just been, I ran track in high school and then been playing a lot of basketball, right? And maybe a few other here, sports here and there. But essentially, number one, everybody, and especially men, I believe should pick up martial arts later in life. A lot of us did some type of martial arts when you were a kid because your parents wanted you to get into sports and get physical and all that stuff. But a lot of us to our own accord stopped doing it. And now I'm in my thirties and I picked it back up and I think it was very, very important. And I learned a lot since then. Right. I mean, I guess why, what, what is it like that you take away from it? Yeah. I mean, overall I would just, and I'm going to get into more specifics, but I will say this, like, it was the first time that I'd pushed my body to that limit since high school. Mm. And in high school sports, running track and playing basketball, that's when I pushed myself. But I have not pushed myself to near exhaustion. Maybe some of the basketball tournaments we played where we're very tired, where we're huffing and puffing, and you're just like, you sweat like six pounds of water. But essentially... When I trained martial arts, I, pu I try to push myself. I know what you're saying because pick up basketball very, very seldomly, maybe one out of every 20 times mm -hmm. turns into that tier. Yeah, and also, listen, you learn a lot about yourself, about your individual self. You know, it's not really a team sport as much, but you do meet a lot of people. And I'll say this, martial arts is best when combined with life experiences. But anyways, we'll get into point number two, David. And I think this is an interesting point that a lot of people need to be reminded of, in my opinion, is that the streets are not a dojo. And what I mean by that is that when, the reason why I got into martial arts primarily was probably the idea of self-defense following everything that has happened the past three, four years, right? But street self-defense is different than learning how to fight in a gym. Right. How you learn to fight, whether it's boxing or MMA or Muay Thai in a gym environment, there's a lot of rules. And you're basically training to be in a refereed fight. You're not training for the streets. Street survival and street self-defense uh, encompasses all a bunch of different things. Awareness, running away, using verbal cues, recognizing people, looking intimidating yourself. That's all a bunch of stuff you're not learning in the gym because you're learning just technique on how to punch, kick, and you know avoid things in a fight. Right. I guess, is it comparable to like saying, okay, there's fencing in the Olympics and then there's like sword fighting in the <laughs> medieval days to try to kill each other? Yeah. And for sure a fencer transported in a time machine is going to be better than any regular person at the sword fighting, but not necessarily going to be the best sword fighter on planet earth if they transport back in time. Yeah. What I learned from doing martial arts and training different martial arts is learning martial arts does not guarantee your safety or victory in the streets because the streets in the streets. And if you talk to a lot of self-defense experts, which I've had some conversations with rage, aggression, and power usually will trump basic technique. Because the streets are random, it's aggressive and everything like that. But that's not to say you shouldn't learn martial arts because obviously if you have some of that rage and awareness in you and you have martial arts technique, then it's 
way better. Right. Is that why some people like very specific Krav Maga schools that are very into yeah. adrenaline testing, cortisol testing, like pressure testing? Like, yeah. Like I, they, they have the fake knives and the fake, mm-hmm. uh, et cetera, weapons and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I took one Krav Maga class, but I'm not going to say that, you know, I'm an expert on that. But yes, from what I know, you basically, the dojo and the gym are essentially isolated areas where a lot of people come to, you pay a membership to, and you learn how to fight. And it's a very supportive of community, which I'm going to get into. But it is not the streets. I'm sorry. Right, it's not right, the streets. Right, right. It can translate somewhat, of but, course. but it's just different. Oh, no. Trust me. If you're a street kid and you learn the technique, then you're way better off. Yeah, you know? I mean, I would say, just to bring it back to basketball, five-on-five five schematic play-action basketball is absolutely different than isolation-heavy street ball. Yeah. There, there's some crossover, and some people can be good at both, but they're different skill sets. Exactly. Uh, point number three, training martial arts for me has been great for my mental, my confidence, my cardio, my flexibility, finding community, uh, even my breathing and basically everything. So I think that obviously I'm very glad that, you know, we play a lot of basketball because I think basketball is a very social sport and there's a lot of, you're managing a lot of different interactions every time you guard somebody. It's a lot of talking. And it's a lot of talking, can be trash talking, but there's a lot of communication. I think martial arts for your individual Mm. self is very, very important. Are you talking about like if we were robots, right? And you couldn't put infographics overlaid on mm-hmm. us like we're robots, like we got inner machinery and these different valves. It teaches you more to manage your inner like buckets. Yeah, yeah. And what I love about martial arts gyms is that they're kind of a governed place because usually random people, if they come in there and they want to act up and have a bad attitude, they're going to get checked pretty quickly because you're going to have someone like Jeff Chan, just spar you and let you know like, hey, bro, there's a hierarchy in this place. So you don't act up. We treat everybody with respect. So you say you're you're saying you saw a lot less toxic attitudes present in the dojo or the martial arts gym versus the basketball court. Yeah, exactly. Like when we, you know, in my little boxing group that I have, like I get to help very beginning people who are zero out of 10 boxing get to like one or two out of 10 boxing, which I'm, I'm only that experienced, right? But I would say like, That type of like, uh, I feel the same way when I got to like mentor little kids in basketball. Mm. So I I just think that anytime you learn martial arts though, you really feel like you accomplish something and it is a generally uh, positive environment for the most part. Yeah, no, that's good. I I totally see that and I totally see actually how toxic basketball can be, especially especially pickup. Trust me, I know a lot of people who stop playing basketball in their older years because how toxic pickup basketball can get. Yeah, to be honest, I would almost say bad attitudes can be sometimes on the court, six out of 10. Like like six out of 10 people are not playing basketball the right way. They're not taking the lessons away from the game that they should be, Mm -hmm. that Kobe would want them to. (laughs) <laughs> no, they Kobe. Yeah. No, they take the most like toxic like ball hog parts of Kobe, but they're not leaning into the whole like self development part that Kobe was like actually ultimately more about. Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of those people like Kobe and like obviously like a lot of other people they've taken some level of martial arts. I don't know, it's good for the mental. Anyways, guys, point number four: uh, no single martial arts is the best for self defense. Now, I'm not a self defense expert, but I have watched a lot of videos and tried to study this as much as I can and asked a lot of questions to a lot of coaches and. Generally, self-defense, it's like we said, it matters a lot on your environment and your situation. How many people are there? How many people are you dealing with? Who are you responsible right. for? What type of situation do you find yourself right. in? Are you fighting a person or a group or what are the right. actual threats and their proximity right. to you? Right? When it comes to self-defense, the easiest answer is to not be in those situations. If you get in those situations, get out of those situations. And number three, have a weapon. A lot of people, most people would never recommend you fight as much as possible. That is the absolute last resort. So while I want to say most experts usually rank Muay Thai and wrestling, some type of combination of those two at the top, you know, one for grappling in case you are not in a striking distance or someone tries to wrap you up or, you know, striking Muay Thai and boxing because, you know, you're going to use your fist. So you're saying Muay Thai, boxing, and jujitsu would be the the stack at the very top of the, let's just say there's like 25 martial arts If you do those three for self-defense, that's what the general opinion is. That is what a lot of people, everything from Jocko to Jeff Chan to uh, Hard to Hurt, they would say, essentially. But, of course, the best self-defense is just not being in those situations, avoiding those people, and using your verbal, you know, abilities to get out of De-escalation or to exit the situation or to create space, Or, David, 
deterrence, which is you just look really intimidating yourself so people don't mess with you. That's yeah. also a self-defense. Yeah, I mean, animals use it in the wild. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, if you got full sleeve tattoos and tattoos on your neck, I think people are less likely to mess with you. Surprise, surprise. Uh, point number five, sparring drills, light sparring, and hard sparring are probably what you will find the most fun. And that's what I find the most fun. So what I mean by sparring is they're sparring drills where you kind of hit each other, but it's with the rhythm and it's a drill. So you know what's coming. And then there's light sparring, which is like kind of free for all. And you are trying to hit each other, but you're throwing punches super light. You're pulling back when you're about to hit each other. Um, and then hard sparring, which is where you're essentially more or less hitting people. But you're not still going 10 out of 10, right? Like um, even in the hard nah, sparring? No, generally in sparring, you would not go 10 out of 10 unless, I guess, there are situations where you go 10 out of 10. I'm sure right before uh, a, a fight, um, you know, Javante Davis probably does a, a round that's probably at least 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10. Right. You know what it I mean? Makes sense. Um, yeah, because drilling to me, like doing the drills on your own and hitting pads. I love that, but there's something about the adrenaline rush that I feel like prepares you for real life situations when you're sparring, because essentially those are like miniature fights. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, just like a lot of people's favorite part of basketball practice is scrimmage, which yes. is typically at the end where you're applying all the concepts you've been drilling on in some sort of parsed out way in the earlier parts of the exactly. practice. Exactly, sparring is essentially like a scrimmage on different levels, right? Um, point number six, this is a personal thing that I don't know, maybe a lot of people didn't think about. You will feel cool after you train martial arts and you will actually want to fight. So I think for a lot of people, and I can't say for everybody, but a lot of the time when you have some newly acquired skills, you want to use them. You're eager because you're like, oh, I know how to throw up straight now. I know that. Oh, oh, I know how to do all this now. And then there's kind of this eagerness to use it, right. which you really shouldn't because you're not that well trained and you might get in a fight. You might get in a situation where, uh, uh, the other person is more trained than you, right? And that overconfidence is going to lead to a negative situation for yourself. Um, it's possible, but I will say this. It's like, it, it all comes together in the bucket of feeling more confident and cool. You also want to use it. But then there's that other side of you that tells you, no, 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 no. You don't know this that well. Just keep training, young one, and be like a Zen warrior, you know? Yeah. And I, I heard that, is it true that the, once the people get past five or 10 years, they don't want to fight again? But for the people within the first several years, the three years, they really want to showcase it. I think it's different for everybody. But yeah, in the beginning, your learning curve is very high. So now you think you've improved a lot. Yeah, You learn how to read some shoulder dips or yeah. people telegraphing you know, things yeah. and you're like... Yeah, I'm unstoppable. Yeah, you need to do a uh, shoulder roll. And everybody's doing the Philly shell because that looks cool. And, you know, that's what Mayweather does. And then you want to um, fight people like that. But point number seven, training hard should hurt sometimes. I think that if you train martial arts and you're kicking and punching and you're doing other things like that, you should bruise yourself sometimes. Um, first few kicks I threw, even with Jeff Chan, I kind of hurt the, the front of my uh, uh, foot where the the front of my ankle right. you know because you're hitting it with your foot i didn't hit it with my shin so it hurt um but i think in a way uh once you kind of get in that mindset it does feel good to kind of come away from training and being like oh i'm kind of sore but that means you accomplish something uh point number eight i believe this is my opinion is that all martial arts have some merit and universal principles that do work and can work in real life. But yes, there are martial arts that are just a little bit more practical than others. And what I mean is like, I think Muay Thai with its accessibility, the amount of people who train um, and the accessibility to coaching is really what a lot of people want to learn. Also, it, it, it also uses boxing as well, right? While Wing Chun, I believe there are principles in Wing Chun that immediately you can use, you know, but... To master Wing Chun, it takes a lot longer. There's less gyms. There's less teaching. It's very teacher dependent. It's less, and it's there's more variation depending on the lineage. Well, would you say that maybe Wing Chun training early on, it doesn't provide that dopamine rush that a lot of people are looking for, that hardcore sweat, that like yes. 10 out of 10, my cardiovascular is going crazy. Yeah. All my levels are mm -hmm. surging. Also, I've heard from a lot of people, if you're going to train Krav Maga, it helps to have a background in some striking before. Like learning boxing or Muay Thai and then learning Krav Maga makes a lot more sense. So anyways, there's different ways, but obviously lesson. If you're going to learn, get into one. Get into one 
martial arts that's accessible for you that's mm. fun you got friends in it's gonna and, be great and, and different people are probably gonna resonate with different ones yeah internally, maybe right? it's wing chun that's fine i think wing chun is really great but i also think there's tons of boxing gyms and tons of muay thai and mma gyms right um number nine martial arts obviously is very much based on the teacher and the school like there's gyms that you know, you go to one gym and they're talking trash about another gym. They don't like how they train or they call themselves an MMA gym, but they're just doing that for marketing. My style is superior to yeah. your style. Are you referring to the, you know, this that is a prototypical kind of thing, for sure. martial arts archetype. No, dude, when I got into conversations with people who like work at gyms and own gyms, I was like, oh, there is kind of like that old school like drama, like, yo, man. Oh, that coach left that gym to go to this gym. That coach left that. Mm. I didn't really like how they taught at that gym. So you're saying it was a little bit like the old school Chinese Kung Fu movies where like my master beat your master. Yeah. Your there's some, there's definitely uh, a lot more drama than I thought. But I felt like between boxing gyms, it's a, because boxing is a more standardized mm. versus even MMA and Muay Thai, I guess. I think the training for boxing is... I guess so standard as, I don't know. Maybe there's beef between boxing gyms too. You let me know in the comments down below. Um, number 10, people train different martial arts for different reasons. Obviously, we have a good friend who trains Wing Chun. He loves Wing Chun and BJJ, but he likes Wing Chun because it's not going to like sever your nerves on your leg and you don't have to like, it's not as ballistic. Right. So you're it's saying something, low risk of nerve damage. Yeah, it's something that you can do when you're older, but it still is martial arts and you still learn high technique, right? Wing Chun is a very high technique thing. But then you also uh, times it with BJJ, which is a very tiring wrestling type style, grappling type style um, uh, martial arts where you're really trying to like untie a knot. And Would you say that some are way more cerebral and some are way more just straight up physical in the sense of just like pounding the yeah. heavy bag and I, like just, uh, just Muay Thai? So you know what I mean? Like that's like... Listen, I'm not a master at any of these, but from what I heard that mastering any of these at a high level, it is cerebral, right? But I think at a base level, things like Wing Chun seem way more cerebral than boxing. But to master either of them, you have to have high technique. I'm sure, I know Mayweather is may not be the most eloquent person or may not even have the highest level of uh, reading ability, uh, but he could probably break down boxing in a highly technical manner. You know what I mean? So uh, anyways... Those are the 10 things that I learned. Hopefully this video um, was helpful for me personally. I'll say I love playing basketball and doing martial arts at the same time. Do I have a favorite martial arts? Um, I think my favorite martial arts right now is the one that is the most accessible and the one that's most fun and the one that is the most gratifying, okay? And I think that for a lot of people, you should judge a martial arts based off that. If you have a good friend that trains in it, start training with them. Whatever it is, you know what I mean? And that's just going to get you into the system. No, for sure, for sure. I mean, I think that from what I can tell, it's something that everybody should pick up. Like, at least dabble in. At least for a season. Like, half a year or a year. Like, when you're later in life, do it for a year at least to kind of update yourself. I think it's kind of like to refresh yourself and to kind of show yourself, hey, I'm like... I'm 25 or hey, I'm 45 and this is what my body can do. Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway for me as somebody who does not do martial arts is I've started to notice how untoxic and how progression-based the training environments for martial arts are versus pickup basketball where it's a lot of people sort of like validating their own insecurities or just like being selfish that day because they had a bad day at work so they shoot the ball every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, definitely basketball can be very toxic. Obviously, we met some very great friends through basketball, but I think that when you do both a team sport and individual martial arts, I think that's a great combination and that's why I recommend it. It doesn't have to be basketball. It could be soccer. Could be pickleball. But do And, and there is a lot of Asian football. guys that are professional in martial arts too. Yeah. Yeah. More than basketball, for sure. Well, to be honest, in sports leagues, there's it's more uneven because I could be guarding a guy who's 6'5", versus I'm probably not going to spar or fight a guy who's 6'5". Unlikely, right? right? It's more weight classed out. Yeah. But anyways, I do plan on taking a wrestling or judo or BJJ class, uh, a specific BJJ class soon, but those are the things. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Hey, hit Andrew up on social media if you guys want to train any type of martial arts. We might be adding yeah. this aspect to the channel. If you guys are trainers out in New York, let me know. I'm down to link up because uh, I think that's really fun too. So anyways, guys, that's my journey so far. Let me know in the comments down below what your feedback is. 
I might not know or, anything. Maybe or, I what I just said all sounded like BS. Yeah, you did let you me agree know. with Andrew what he said? What's your own personal journey within martial arts? What specific martial arts? What do you think about the beef between different styles and ranking this style versus over that style? Those are always fun discussions. Keep it civil. We encourage the debate. Until next time, we're going to hop out, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.